crowded students. Welcome to Experimental Techniques and Material Characterizations, lecture number 19. I'm Dr. Pervez Ahmed. Uh, in this lecture, uh, we will continue on the X-ray. Uh, we will continue discussion on the X-ray diffractions. Uh, today's topic is uh, X-ray uh, XRD fix analysis. So, uh, in this analysis, uh, we will deal uh, with the phase composition of a sample. Along with that, we will have a discussion on the unit cell lattice parameters and Bravi's lattice. Uh, we will talk about the crystal structures and along with that, uh, we will also have a discussion on the crystallite size uh, and uh, micro strain. So, let's proceed towards uh, today's lecture. That is, uh, what actually the, the first question that we have uh, whenever uh, someone want to uh, do the X, uh, XRD analysis. Uh, so we have the question in mind that what can uh, or what sort of the information we get uh, from uh, the XRD. So uh, you can use XRD uh, to determine uh, the phase composition of a sample. Uh, so what it mean? Uh, it mean that uh, we can do the quantitative phase analysis. Uh, to determine the relative amount of the phases and the mixtures uh, by referencing the relative uh, peak uh, intensity. Uh, along with that, we can get information about the unit, uh, unit cell lattice parameters and uh, Bravi's lattice uh, symmetry. Uh, and that is uh, done uh, with the help of uh, indexing uh, peak physicians. Uh, and uh, we can also do the lattice parameters. Uh, I mean, we can also get the information about the lattice parameters. Uh, so uh, that can be done as a function of the peak positions and therefore give you information about allowing doping solid uh, solutions, uh, strain, etc. I mean, it's, uh, the, uh, the peak positions uh, in the XRD pattern is uh, very important. And that contains all the information. I mean, uh, that peak positions, uh, it not only gave you the information about the lattice parameters, uh, but it also gave you the information about uh, the allying of the mate different materials. Similarly, it gives you information about the doping uh, solid solutions and uh, the strain, uh, etc., of a particular uh, materials. Uh, we can also get information about residual strain, uh, which is also called the micro strain. Uh, we get, uh, we can get the information about the uh, the crystal structures uh, by uh, retrieval refinement of the entire diffraction patterns. Uh, uh, along with that, it can give uh, information about uh, the epitaxy or uh, textures or uh, orientation of a sample. Uh, and definitely we get the information about the crystallite uh, size and micro stain um, and that is uh, particularly done by uh, by peak uh, broadening i mean uh, we have uh, an xrd pattern uh, so you know that there are two important thing about uh, the xrd uh, patterns uh, about the peak uh, one is the intensity and other is the broadening of the peak so uh, the broadening of the peak uh, is given, and basically gives information uh, about the crystallite size and also uh, the micro uh, strain. So uh, along with that is also give the information uh, I mean about uh, the defect if we have some sort of the defect. So that uh, defect may be indicated by the peak uh, broadening etc. Uh, so uh, that's why we are saying that uh, I mean uh, in XRD analysis uh, the peak shape and peak width is very important uh, that one should uh, uh, be careful about it. And uh, we can also have in situ uh, capabilities too uh, that is uh, we can evaluate all the properties uh, I mean just like we mentioned above. Uh, as a function of time, temperature, and uh, gas environment. I mean, all of these we can uh, evaluate with respect to uh, the time, temperature, and gas uh, environment. So here you have uh, a typical XRD patterns of titanium dioxide. So uh, you can analyze uh, for yourself that we have uh, three phases of titanium dioxide. Uh, we have an athasi. Uh, so that is uh, being shown in green color and uh, then we have brocade uh, and blue so you have all the peak for the brocade and then the rotile phase uh, so the rotile phase i mean it's, it's been shown in the uh, red color 
so all these uh, peak all these uh, peak positions uh, they are being they can clearly be visualized here in this xrd pattern so the direction patterns for every phase is as unique uh, as your uh, fingerprint uh, what it mean it mean that uh, phases with the same chemical compositions uh, can have drastically different uh, diffraction uh, patterns. So uh, we use the positions uh, and relative intensity of a series of peak uh, to match experimental data to the reference patterns uh, in the database. So what is the database? Uh, the database uh, that we use in the XRD analysis uh, uh, one of the most famous uh, about uh, in those databases is called uh, PDF that is a powder diffraction file. So powder diffraction call can uh, it contains information uh, about the, the DILS for thousands of the crystalline uh, phases. I mean this is a, a, a popular database in x-ray powder diffraction patterns uh, which contain the uh, a list of uh, a di list of thousand of crystalline uh, phases so uh, uh, how many uh, in thousand so the, the, the pdf contains over uh, 200000 diffraction patterns so modern computers can help you to determine what phases are present in your sample by quickly comparing your diffraction data to all of the pattern in the uh, database so here you can see that uh, I mean uh, it's a typical uh, I mean uh, the PDF uh, 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 PDF file of a particular sample. Uh, so for here you can see that the PDF card uh, for uh, an entry contain a lot of useful informations uh, which you can hear. Uh, you can see it here for yourself. I mean it's a, a titanium dioxide sample. So here you can see all the informations. I mean it's, uh, it's been displayed here. Uh, with the help of a computer screen so here uh, you see that will all the other information it also contain the literature reference so here you can see the literature uh, reference as well so pdf uh, database is very useful uh, while analyzing your uh, xrd uh, data so we also have quantitative phase uh, analysis uh, and that can be done uh, by the way, you can see it here uh, with the help of uh, uh, this uh, spectrum. So with high quality data, uh, you can determine how much of each phase is uh, present. So for that, uh, I mean, uh, we must meet the, the constant volume assumptions. Uh, so that we will discuss in the coming slide. So uh, in order to do this, uh, I mean, here you can see that with the help of this spectrum, uh, the ratio of peak uh, intensity, I mean here, uh, that is being taken along the y-axis, uh, there's the, the ratio of the uh, peak intensities uh, that varies uh, linearly as a function of weight fractions for any two phases in the uh, mixture. So here you can see that, uh, I mean, so you can check it for yourself that it varies linearly. So, uh, we need to know the constants of, of proportionality in this particular uh, case. So rare method is fast uh, and gives uh, semi-quantitative uh, results. Uh, whole pattern uh, pitting or uh, ritual refinement is a more accurate but more complicated analysis. Uh, so uh, what we get uh, about the unit cell lattice parameter uh, refinement so by accurately measuring the peak positions uh, or a long range up to theta, uh, uh, you can determine the unit cell lattice parameters of those spaces and uh, your sample. And uh, we can also get the information about allowing uh, substitutional doping, temperature and pressure, etc. Uh, I mean, uh, that can create changes in the lattice parameter uh, that you may want to quantify. And sometimes the changes, uh, I mean, uh, that we uh, brought uh, deliberately in our sample. Uh, by changes, we mean sometimes we, we try to do the doffing in order to enhance uh, some of the properties. I mean, sometimes we try to increase the magnetic properties. So for that, uh, we dope different material into a particular sample. So that can be analyzed uh, with the help of the 
uh, XRD uh, analysis. So uh, in that case, uh, I mean uh, we use many peaks over a long range up to theta so that uh, we can identify and correct for systematic error such as specimens uh, displacement and uh, zero shaft. So we measure fig positions uh, with a fig search algorithm or uh, profile fitting. Uh, from profile fitting we mean that uh, uh, it is a, a more accurate but more time consuming. I mean uh, for, uh, we do the profile fitting uh, and other to get uh, accurate uh, another to uh, do the accurate measurement for uh, the fig position. Uh, but we remember profile fitting uh, is some sort of, uh, I mean though it is a, a more accurate technique, but uh, it is a very uh, time consuming uh, method. So you should be very patient about that and then numerically refine uh, the lattice uh, parameters. So how we get the crystallite size in micro stain? So the crystallite size, uh, I mean uh, uh, the crystallite size. Uh, uh, can be calculated with the help of the Scherer equations uh, which you can uh, see it here is a Scherer equation or also called uh, the Scherer formula and this is particularly useful when the crystallite size uh, is smaller than a 120 nanometer. So it is create a broadening of the diffraction peak. So when the crystallite size is smaller than 120 nanometer, so it create the broadening of the diffraction peak. So this peak broadening can be used uh, to quantify the average uh, crystallized size of the nanoparticles by using the Scherer equations, uh, I mean which you can see it here. So this is the Scherer equations uh, with the help of which uh, you can find the, uh, you can find the crystallized size. So you must know the contribution of peak width uh, from the instrument by using the uh, collaborating or curve. Uh, so, uh, after knowing that uh, you may know micro, uh, micro stain may also be uh, also, uh, may also create a peak uh, broadening. So analyzing the peak uh, width over a long range up to theta by using a uh, Williamson Hull plot can let you uh, separate micro stain and uh, crystallite side. So here is a typical uh, plot. And with the help of uh, with the help of that, you can uh, do uh, I mean uh, your analysis, and you can analyze the peak uh, width. Uh, I mean here you can see, and you can do that uh, over a, a long range of two theta. So it's a, a typical uh, example of Williamson's whole plot uh, that can let you separate micro strain and uh, crystallite size. So here you what actually you need uh, you need a uh, full width half maxima and radians. So here you can uh, you can get it from here and you also need to put the value of theta. So you know that here we have the value in theta. So first you have to calculate uh, the value in, uh, in radian uh, for 2 theta and then you have to divide it by 2 in order to get the value for our theta. Full width half maxima uh, you will already calculate it from here. K value, uh, you know that is K factors, uh, it has a value in particular range and lambda is the wavelength of the radiation, the X radiation use. So these factors, uh, they are already known. So what actually we are interested in, we are interested uh, in calculation of L and uh, theta, which after calculating, you put in this equation. So uh, you will get the information or you will get the uh, crystallite size of your uh, materials. So preferred orientations or the texture, uh, preferred orientation of the crystallite can create a systematic variations in a diffraction uh, peak intensities, uh, which you can see it here. I mean, uh, uh, the peak position or the peak orientations, uh, it depend upon uh, the sample and the sample structures. I mean, uh, depend upon the sample structures. So. Uh, uh, According to that, uh, the patterns uh, or the peak and the pattern it also uh, varies, even the intensity varies according to uh, the orientation or uh, the texture of your sample. So it can uh, qualitatively be analyzed by using uh, a one, uh, uh, one dimension diffraction uh, patterns. Uh, an example of that uh, you can see it here. So we can also get a pole figure map 
that uh, a pole figure map of the intensity of a sample peak uh, as a function of the tilt uh, and rotation of the sample. I mean, if you want to uh, rotate your sample or you want to tell that, so uh, I mean, you can also get information uh, in this pattern. So this is uh, a four figure map. Uh, I mean, uh, a four figure mass, the intensity of a single peak uh, as a function of tilt uh, and rotation of the sample. So this can be used to uh, quantify uh, the, the, the textures or, or the structure of the, uh, your sample. So that's all we have for uh, this lecture. Uh, thanks for watching. Stay tuned with the next lectures. Uh, the next lecture will be about uh, essential part of the X-ray diaphragmatic So stay tuned with the next lecture. Till then, bye bye.